Okay, so this time we're going to try and add OEM um, Nissan fog lights to my 2006 Murano that never came with fog lights. Um, I got the parts from the junkyard. I got the I got the lights, the plugs, the mounts, um, and then I got me a switch from eBay that includes the fog light part on the switch. And I believe when I looked at the wiring, I have to double check again as part of this video, but I believe that the car is already wired for it. I know the plugs are there, um, and I think there's a relay there, or there's a spot for a relay to get put in. So I'm hoping once I install the lights, once I put in the new switch with the fog part uh, on it, uh, I'm hoping that all the, there's already existing wiring in place and it'll just come on. So hopefully there won't be too much trickery after that. So uh, uh, we'll learn as we go here. Okay, so this is one of the uh, the original fog light assemblies with the with the plug on it. It's got the bulb in it already. Um, so I bought two of those from the junkyard. Then I got this switch on eBay. Um, and in this case, the fog light indicator is right there. The switch that's currently in the car doesn't have that. Then I got this switch uh, from eBay. And this is the critical part here, right? So this part here turns the fog lights on and off. Currently, my car doesn't have that as part of the stock. That just doesn't exist there. I do know it plugs in the same way. So I'm just hoping that the uh, all the pins will be live and work when we're done. So before we can get started, we have to pull off the bumper cover, at least loosen it and move it so we can access behind the bumper cover where the fog lights go. This is important, especially on the passenger side, because you cannot easily reach the fog light assembly under, uh, from under the passenger side because the washer fluid tank is in the way. The driver's side is easier. There's no washer fluid tank there. You could do it on the driver's side without pulling off the bumper cover if you want. But uh, I'll show you how to pull off the bumper cover and at least loosen it to give you access on both sides. And then we'll, uh, we'll go about putting these assemblies in there. What well, we're going to start with, I'll get the camera on the tripod. We're going to start with taking all this trim off all the way across. We'll get this grill off of here, okay? Then we're gonna go in the wheel wells on both sides. There's some fasteners here that hold on this bumper cover. We'll get the whole bumper cover pulled. Do that on both sides. That's gonna give us the access we need. Okay, so as we go along, there's multiple clips across all three of these panels. There's the left, uh, right, I'll call them wings, left and right wing. Then there's the uh, your air scoop here that feeds down into your air filter. So we'll start getting all three of these pieces off. I uh, have a little tray here for all the little clips because there is a bunch of them. So some of my clips are not original because this car has got so many miles on it. I try to replace some of the clips with original clips, but just not always feasible or cost effective. For example, I put a couple screws in here, you know. So if you see me get up, take out a Phillips screwdriver and my nut driver here in a few minutes, um, you may or may not need to do that depending on how your screws are or clips are. Uh, I've had parts of this car apart many, many times. If you watch any of my other videos, this car has been taken apart numerous times over the years, but that's one possibility. And this you kind of have to turn it as you go, right? Because this whole thing is what's in there. And that goes all the way down into your plastic air intake right before your air filter. So now with all those three pieces off, now we got one, two, three, got six clips at the top of the grill. Pop those off too. These are the original style. So these have got the large push pin that goes into that. And uh, what I got here is I got a pincer style clip uh, puller. So this just reaches around like that. And that lets me pull that center pin right out. Correctly, this unclips down here. Yep. There we go. So we've got is this grill has integrated clips along the bottom. Six of them that go into here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now we got the grill. Next step, just because we're here, 
There's two plastic clips right here that attach to the top of this bumper cover. We use the same, same type of tool because this is that type of clip. Now, the center of this bumper cover is free. There's nothing else up here that I need to do to make that come free now. So, let's go to the wheel wells. Okay, so this is the passenger side wheel well. I didn't take the tire off because I don't really need to. Um, if, you don't if you don't have an angle screwdriver like this, uh, this is actually called a skew driver. Skew, see? And, uh, but this lets me get in to these tight spots. Um, so there's supposed to be three Phillips screws holding this mud flap in. I'm missing one and I'm missing a clip in there. It's supposed to be a clip right here. Okay. Then there's supposed to be a couple clips or screws underneath here. I think I still have one screw left under there. Uh, yeah. And then I had to zip tie that side cause I lost the clip also. So, but that's how you'll get the mud flap off that's simple enough i'll just do that off camera get right back with you so now with the mud flap removed what that does is that gives us access behind this plastic skirt okay and what you'll see here is there's a bolt right there um i don't know what size this was originally i think that i actually replaced this with a something else because maybe the original bolt was no good i can't remember but there's a through bolt here straight above and that should be the last thing holding this side of the bumper cover on so basically you take off like i already showed you you take off the mud flap on both sides get behind this panel take out this bolt and we should be able to pull the bumper cover right off so i'll take this bolt off and i'll show you what it looks like uh, from the front again when we get this going and the fender like we just talked about now we can take this right off that gives us the room we need to be able to get this headlight out now okay so then we'll do the same thing on the other side and that'll give us room to work on these headlights so you don't necessarily need to bring it all the way down out of the way just to work but you just need that much space okay so now with this loose now we can see the back of the cup where the fog light's going to go so we're going to press on this clip to push that forward and be another clip on the side over here press on that push it forward again then there's a clip on this side and that's going to push this cup right and there's also a clip on the bottom we'll push well maybe i'm trying to there we go so that's the original cup when you don't have any fog lights Now what happens is there's a bolt on the top um, of the fog light assembly. That bolt goes right here. There's a couple of plastic clips that I had to take out of the donor car that'll go back here. So basically the whole fog light assembly will get pushed in. It'll click in place here, and then I'll have to put the, th the bolt in from the top. <clears throat> I thought there was trim also, but you'll find out when we're done here, there is no trim. This whole thing just clicks in. Um, into that opening so when you pull the headlight in the assembly or excuse me when you pull the fog light in the assembly from the donor car make sure you pull these plastic clips from the uh from the car as well i'll show you how these work go right down in here press them straight in okay into those holes all right Now, there's two nubs on the bottom of the fog light assembly. Those are going to push straight in and engage into those clips we just put in. Also, grab the 10 millimeter bolt that held this in the donor car and bring that with you. I'm going to pull that out right now with a ratchet because I, I left it there to make sure I didn't lose it. But now, obviously, we're ready to do the work so we can pull it back out. 
So now we got the bolt hole up. Those two nubs are facing down. We can thread the wire harness through the hole. Start sliding this in place. And like I said, we want to get those nubs lined up with those plastic fittings, okay? So work from both sides now. I'll try and line them up from the back. And then I'll push, I'll push on the front of the housing. So now you can see those metal pins are pushed into those clips a little bit. Okay. And now this hole on the top is lined up with the, where that bolt's going to go in. So we'll drop that bolt in now. And then the physical mounting part will be done. Now, the donor car, I don't believe had anything here. So I'm not sure why I can still see these holes because I did go back to the donor car. Maybe, um, maybe there is a different ring here that you might want to get. I'm not exactly sure. Or maybe the donor car is molded differently because it came with fog lights. I'm not exactly sure there. Um, I believe if I wanted to, I could modify the old cup that was in here and uh, clip it back in. I may actually do that and then just have it conform to the outside edge of this, but we'll see how that goes. So now, if you look down here, there is a plug. Okay. <clears throat> so down here, attached to the back of the washer fluid tank, is this plug. This is your fog light plug okay. with that will that will made up so i'm not exactly sure but i think i may have pulled these fog lights off of another year murano maybe something that's before 06 um because i'm reading now on the forums just now that uh that the mounting is a little bit different for these fog lights and the trim is a little bit different so basically what i've got is this is the trim i took off and it looks like what i can do is carefully take a dremel tool and cut along this line here and keep just the bezel and cut out everything in the middle and these clips should still work. Well, that's how I'll handle the trim. So um, I'll show you what the driver side looks like as far as access and then you can just duplicate the same process with your other fog light that you get from your donor car um, on that side. Okay, so we're on the driver side now. And as you peel back this, you can see the same back of the same fog light housing cup. And then when you go down here, let's see. It's a little tricky to see, but that plug right there, right there on the bottom of that, uh, I think that's my part of my air box. It feeds my air filter, I believe. Um, that is the plug you're gonna plug in the new fog light to. You just have to plug in from the other side, okay? So whereas the open part of the plug on the passenger side faced out, on this side, the open side faces in. So you'll just snake that harness around, plug it in there after you've mounted your fog light. And then after that, then we can go on to changing out the switch um, and the steering wheel. <clears throat> I do have a video already up about changing out the whole clock spring in the center of this. I don't think we have to go that far, um, but we'll find out. I should be able to disassemble this. I'll show you how to do that. Pull this off. There's a, there's a screw here that holds this in. And we should be able to, I think, unclip this and pull it straight out and clip the new one straight in. That's what we're going to try and do. Okay, so to get this stuff off, so we get to this stock here. I'm going to take off a screw here, 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 and here. I believe they're all Phillips, and that'll let us split this in half because there's a top half and a bottom half to this. So I'll pull those screws out and I'll show you what's next. So now once you take the screw out of this handle, 
this handle will slide right off for us, okay? Then we can pull this piece of plastic off and we can start pulling these apart, okay? So now we'll tilt the wheel down a little bit. We just reach in with our finger and you activate the lever. Tilt it down, this top cover will come right off. Okay, so now there's a clip right here, okay? There's another clip just like it right down here, okay? So you wanna reach in, you can get your fingers around this. Press that clip and start pulling it out. And that should reach all the way around from behind like this. See how my hand is reaching around behind? Unplug the whole switch, okay? So now we'll plug the new switch in, turn the car on, turn the lights on, and see if our first fog light turns on. If it does, this is gonna be a real easy project. Got the new switch, line it up on the rails, plug it in, and let's uh, see the headlights work. Okay, so here's what I found out. Without doing any reprogramming to the car, uh, these fog lights work, okay? So uh, the only problem I found was that the connection in the fender uh, where I showed you behind the washer tank and uh, underneath the driver's headlight, there's a bad connection there. Uh, probably because the plug has just been covered with filth for a long time. So what I'm gonna do for reliability is I'm gonna cut those wires, make sure that they, there's only two wires there, so I'm gonna cut them, solder them, heat shrink them to make sure that I don't have a bad connection there anymore. Um, and I determined all of that through troubleshooting. You know, I could turn on the fog light switch and I could hear the relay clicking in the uh, IPDM module and under the hood. And uh, I found that the fuse that was already in place for the fog lights, even though this car never came with fog lights, the fuse was good. So I knew it was trying to get power out there. And then I used my multimeter on the plug that feeds that bulb and I was getting some voltage, um, just not full voltage. And then uh, I left the light plugged in and I started manipulating the harnesses. When I squeezed that plug a little more, the light would flicker on and off. So there's there's definitely bad connection in those plugs if you've never used them before uh, since you've had the car. So I'm gonna start all those wires together. The, the summary of this video is, if you wanna add original fog lights to your 2006 Nissan Murano, you can do it. It's not a huge ordeal um, and they will actually work afterwards. Get yourself a new switch, get yourself the fog lights um, and be prepared to solder the wires in the fender most likely um, to make sure that it's gonna work properly for you. So. All right, I'm kind of excited because I always wanted these on here and never had them. So uh, thanks for watching, I hope this helped you. Okay, so I decided since I was already here, I'd go ahead and give you a brief tutorial on uh, soldering. I've got my solder station out. I've got my DeWalt battery powered heat gun. Uh, it's handy, It doesn't. the battery doesn't last that long because um, it takes so much electricity to create the heat, but it's good for a little projects like this. It's also good for when you're not actually near a power cord. It also cools down a lot faster than my regular plug-in style. Uh, so this is the end of the plug that goes to the bulb uh, behind the fog light. And I've already cut off the plugs, okay? So I unclipped uh, the plug from underneath here, unclipped it in two places. That lets the harness come out this long. I only cut off the plug, so that's how long it is. Then I went ahead and I cut off the plug on this side of the harness that comes from the fog light. And you'll notice the wire colors are the same, okay? We have a black, then we have a white with a red stripe, okay? So that makes it nice. So the first thing we need to do here, though, is we need to give ourselves a piece of heat shrink that will go around both of these when we're all done. You sort of have to think backwards um, in your steps when you want to solder and heat shrink because your heat shrink has to be ready to go on after you solder. So once you solder this, you obviously can't put the heat shrink over the joint you know, you, you can't because it's already connected. So um, I know from experience, it's gonna take me maybe inch to an inch and a half uh, total of wire space to actually make the joints. So I'm gonna cut some of this. This is a larger size heat shrink than I need. Uh, a lot of times they come in pieces like this uh, pre-cut. So I'll just cut it about in half. <clears throat> and then this I'll slide on and get it as far away from the joint as I can. This is gonna be the last thing that we put over these other two joints, okay? Now, I'll take another piece that's smaller, okay? Because the heat shrink only shrinks so far. It's gotta fit around the wire pretty close, um, but not too snug, because you need a little bit of room for the joint, because the joint is usually 
uh, going to be a little bit thicker than this wire. So now I have a smaller size. I'll cut that in half also. And this, each of these wires will get one sleeve of this. Okay. And again, we want to keep it as far away from the joint for now as possible because the heat from the joint will start the heat shrink uh, shrinking. Okay. So now I'm ready to solder. Okay. Once I strip these back, but because now I can solder the red and white together. I can bring the heat shrink up over the joint, heat it, shrink it, do the same thing for the black. And then once those are done, then I can bring this larger heat shrink that I started with up over both of those and, uh, and seal the whole thing up. In fact, um, yeah. So I will start with stripping back a little bit of each of this red and white wire. Okay. Maybe uh, you know, three eighths of an inch, something like that. Just enough you can put a little solder on there. So the way you do this now is you've got your soldering iron already warmed up. <clears throat> um, you'll touch the soldering iron to the wire to warm it up and then touch the solder to the iron or to the wire. And you're going to put some solder on this wire. This is called tinning the wire, okay? So you're going to prepare it to mate with the other wire that we're also going to tin. Okay, let that be right there. Sometimes one of the trickiest parts of soldering is finding enough hands to hold everything together, okay? So I'm just gonna loop that through that, like that, just to hold it in place. Do the same thing here. Apply some solder to that wire in order to tin it. I'll clean off the tip. Yeah, on the wet sponge, like so. Bring wire back through. <clears throat> now, the other tricky thing with soldering sometimes is trying not to burn yourself with some of these more interesting projects. So now I'm gonna heat up both of the wires together and the solder that's on them until they bond together. Hold it very still, give the solder a chance to cool And now those two wires are soldered together. Now I can bring the small heat shrink over the entire joint, like so. And now I can use my heat gun and it'll shrink that right down for me. go. This is uh, what they call a marine grade heat shrink. It has glue inside it. So now that it's shrunk down, you can actually see the glue protruding a little bit from each side, which also helps make this uh, a better seal, especially for inside the wheel well of a car like this. So I'll repeat the process. The other wire. Same shrink again. Now I can bring the larger shrink over both joints. Now 
This one's still warm, so it's just pushing. So I'll wait till this cools down a little bit more. Because this uh, larger shrink is kind of a snug fit. But it should go over everything. The way I planned it would. So that's just a little bit too small, this larger shrink, to go over the entire thing. So what I'll do is I'll shrink this down, <clears throat> in this case, and then I'll go ahead and I'm going to wrap it in black tape anyway, um, because I do want another barrier uh, to the elements. <clears throat> so the second layer of heat shrink looks like it was able to make it over the solder joints, um, from what I could tell, but it just doesn't seem to make it all the way to the other end of the rest of the shrink so this will still provide us a little bit extra protection and that's that's what the heat shrink is all about protecting this from the elements uh protecting your solder joint and everything keeping everything together so cover it all in some black tape now and now when i turn the lights on turn the fog lights on uh this light will work um because as I described, there was just bad connections in those plugs from too much dirt being caught up in there uh, over the years. Because those plugs are exposed. Um, I mean, they're they're inside the fender, but they're still exposed to to dirt and moisture, and that's what had built up in them is dirt and moisture. So the contacts were filthy. Um, where even though the switch was turning the relay on and the relay was sending power to the plug, the connection was not good enough to pass um, the power through to the light bulb. You could add uh, some split loom tubing here if you wanted to. You could wrap this whole thing in tape if you wanted to. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do that. But uh, now, plug this fixture in and turn on the lights now we have fog lights and there's no problem with uh, any of that so you can actually hear that's the fog light relay clicking on and off you can hear that in the IPDM and so as long as you hear that clicking you know it's trying to send power out to the circuit. So that's how you can solder that, make that a better connection uh, if you do this exact same project that I did. So uh, that's the details. Now you can just mount this one over here like you did on the passenger side and uh, you probably should be all good to go.